بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم نحمده ونصلي ونصلي مع على رسوله الكريم أما بعد السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته الحمد لله we just continuing this this very long hadith which we which we started two days ago and this hadith is regarding the glad tidings and the respect and honor which a which a Muslim which a Mu'min has at the time of death so just a quick recap of what we've covered so far uh, when a person, when a mu'min, he passes away, or when he's on the verge of passing away, so the soul hasn't uh, hasn't been extracted, it hasn't been extracted from the body yet. So the person's still alive, but when the soul is on the verge of being taken out from the body, then what happens is a group of angels, they come, and they wait for the soul to be. To be removed, and they they're waiting at a distance, and the angel of death, the angel of death will come, and it will sit by the head side of, of the person who's about to pass away. Then the angel of death it will take out the soul, and it will pass on this soul to those group of angels. Now these group of angels they will put the soul in, in the shroud, which has come from Jannah, and they will. Uh, put some fragrance uh, upon this soul and this fragrance will also come from from Jannah now the, these group of angels they will ascend with this soul and they will take it towards the skies until they reach the seventh heaven and this is where we reached so now once the this soul it reaches the seventh heaven Allah Ta'ala will say فَيَقُولُ اللَّهُ تَعَالَى اُكْتُبُوا كِتَابَهُ فِي عِلِّيِّينَ وَعِيدُهُ إِلَى الْأَرْضِ So Allah Ta'ala will say that اُكْتُبُوا كِتَابَهُ That اُكْتُبُوا means to, literally means to write But in this case, it means to to affirm To confirm, basically So And كِتَابَهُ كِتَاب means book But here it refers to his book of deeds So Allah Ta'ala says, confirm his book of deeds to be fi illiyin. Illiyin. Now, illiyin, there's two meanings to this. Well, there's two ways that the word illiyin has been uh, interpreted. Allah Ta'ala mentions this word in the Quran. Kalla inna kitab al fi illiyin. So, the first, uh, the, the first meaning can say of illiyin is that the word illiyin refers to a register a register where the the souls of the pious and the souls of those high ranking uh, exalted believers uh, will be placed basically so their book of deeds they're inside this register so Allah Ta'ala says Uktubu kitabahu fi ilniyin that confirm that the this person, this believer's book of deeds will be placed in that register, meaning in that register of ilniyin, meaning in that register where the those who are pious and those who who are have this exalted status place that soul in in that group of people. So that's the first meaning of Iliyin. The second meaning of Iliyin, it refers to a place. Now this place is beneath the Arsh of Allah Ta'ala. And this is a place where the pious souls gather. And this is a place where their book of deeds are, 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 also, are also collected and, and kept. So, <coughs> so Allah Ta'ala says, Uktubu kitabahu fi Iliyin, that Place this person's book of deeds in Iliyin, so either it's referring to the register or either it means that that put his book of deeds in in the place which is known as Iliyin. Wa iduhu ila al arud, and then return the soul, return his soul to to the earth. So now there's one thing that we need to understand here that the ruh, the the soul of a person. When, whilst it's whilst a person's living, then the soul is is fully connected to the body. 
But when a person passes away, then the soul is partially connected to the body. So now the best way of, of understanding this is, um, it's like, it's abstract. Abstract means that despite something being connected, the there's... There's like thoughts and ideas which exist regarding a thing, but there's no physical or there's no physical presence to that. For example, let's just say it's getting a bit complicated, but let's just say love and hate. Love and hate is something which is within one's mind and within one's heart. There's no physical concept or there's no physical existence. Full love and hate. You can't see it. So same when it comes to the ruh, that it's that the the ruh, when a person passes away, it will be connected to the body. But as for this ruh experiencing the the delights and the pleasures of the the good abode which you'll be in, or perhaps as for the ruh experiencing the punishment and the disasters of of the bad state that it'll be in, this is something which is abstract. This is something which there's no physical evidence for. You can't see it. Rather this is this all this you know, this either this reward or this punishment is happening to the soul. So the best way to understand this is like a dream. When a person sleeps and when a person sees a good dream then he sees that okay he's experiencing all these pleasures and all these delights. However, if there's a person who's sitting next to this person uh, and this person's in a dream and he's going through these you know wonderful sceneries and these you know, wonderful pleasures and and so on and so forth, the person who's next to him can't understand what state that that person is in or what he's going through. There's no way he can understand physically you can't see anything, and same applies for example, if a person sees a bad dream. Now, when a person sees a bad dream, then physically, there's no there's no idea that you can tell. Everything's inside the mind. Whatever horror, whatever panic, whatever anxiety the the person is going through, it's all inside the mind. So, same for a person when they're inside the grave. That their souls, or if they're being rewarded or they're being punished, then it's kind of like a dream. That's the best way to understand it. That physically they're dead. And physically you won't see them being punished. You won't see that there's fire in their grave or you know the or they're being given rewards and fruits from Jannah. Physically physically nothing like that will be seen. But all of this will be taking place with the soul, kind of like a dream. But obviously it be the reality would be much more stronger than a dream. So now Allah Ta'ala says, وَأَعِيدُوهُ إِلَى الْأَرْضِ So Allah Ta'ala is saying that return the soul back to earth. Meaning, currently at the moment, the soul was taken out and the soul was removed from the body when the person passed away. Now after establishing the the position of the soul that, okay, this soul will be amongst the illiyin, this soul will be amongst the pious people. After affirming his position and after confirming that, okay, this is uh, this is the abode, this is the eventual abode of the soul, the soul will be returned back to the body. And it will be returned back to the body in order to commence the questioning of the grave. So then what will happen is that once this soul returns to the to earth uh, and... Um, the the, the ruh, it goes back to the body, then two angels will come, and two angels will sit by, and the, the angels will start questioning the, the the soul, meaning the questions of the grave will begin. So we'll leave it to there, inshallah ta'ala. So may Allah ta'ala gives a tawfiq to benefit. Subhanallah, bihamdi, subhanakallahumma, bihamdika, shadu wa la ilaha illa anta, astaghfiruka, atubu ilayhi.